First of all, the best thing to do is to get an idea of both of the books that we're going to focus on tonight uh, and how they came about for those of us who, who haven't read them yet. I think we'll start with Lyrics Ali, Leila, um, which was inspired in part by the life of your uncle. Can you introduce us to your main characters and give us an idea of the book of Lyrics Ali? Okay. Um, the, the novel was inspired by my father's um, cousin, and his name was uh, Hassan Awad Abu Layla. And um, he was a little bit older than my father, and um, my father looked up to him. But um, when Hassan was 18, and he was uh, studying at, the, um, at Victoria College, which was, a, a, which was considered the Eton of the Middle East at the time, uh, he had a swimming accident and um, he became paralyzed. And so this kind of changed the trajectory of his life and he was um, unable to continue with his university education and he was unable to uh, marry his cousin whom he was um, uh, unofficially engaged to. And so um, in, he turned to writing poetry as a way of you know, comforting himself and talking about his feelings about the accident. And uh, these poems became um, very popular songs because in, in the Arab world, uh, songs are um, composed by a musician using the lyrics written by a poet. So these songs became very popular. And this was in the 1950s at the time when you know, radio was, was just coming into its own and young people were uh, you know, enjoying having um, a way of expressing themselves. So suddenly these songs became extremely uh, popular. And so my, my father grew up with this story very much close to him. And it was one of the stories that he kept telling me and talking about it as I grew up. So I was very much influenced by it. And um, as um, I started writing Lyrics Alley um, a couple of years before my father passed away, and in a way I was like trying to sort of hang on to his memory to his life and, and to kind of re relive his past because I felt that that was going to go away with him as well. And, um, and of course now, even now, if I pick up the book and I, and, and I read it, it sounds exotic because it is, a, it is a lifestyle that has come to an end, that has passed away. Um, but it is, it is very true and I tried to be very um, true to it as I was writing it. When you're writing, you do go back to, to the childhood experiences and, uh, um, and especially in terms of um, the physical world, I was very much shaped by, by my memories of Sudan. The, I mean, my, my sort of, um, uh, my idea of distance, my idea of colors and are, are sort of shaped by these early memories that I, that I have, the early experiences that, that I have. I forget who it was, but some writer said that everything we use in our writing essentially was learned by the age of 10. And everything else is just detail that we use thereafter. Yeah. What were the difficulties of adjusting to life here? Did, do you, 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 know, you said that Bagr fits in to where he is, he's, he's sort of integrated into that society, but did you have any difficulties and was that, started, was that connected to you starting to write for the first time? Well, I had difficulties because I was arrogant enough to think that I wouldn't have difficulties. So I came in, <laughs> I, I came in thinking, oh, you know, I, my English is fine. My, <laughs> my, I've been, I've, you know, I've visited London before, um, um, so I won't have any problem. Um, and, and then, but then living um, on a day-to-day -day basis and bringing up my children here, it, it wasn't so straightforward, mm -hmm. you know, because, mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, even simple things like the weather, I mean, you, <laughs> but, <laughs> you <laughs> things that, that if you live here all your life, you know, like how to dress, you know, for this particular weather still or that. Still catches us out. <laughs> yeah, but still, yeah. I mean, yeah, I just, I like, I didn't know, you had to learn, I had to watch what other people were wearing or uh -huh. what, uh, you know, how, uh, I, I had little boys and I used to make them wear tights and they hate me now for this because <laughs> I, just, I, I didn't know. They, every time I put socks on them, the socks fall off. So I, 
I thought that was awful, so I made them wear tights. Logical. <laughs> Logical. Until, <laughs> until a certain age, of course. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. then, um, so little things like that, you know, mm -hmm. caught, caught me out. And um, of course, it's, 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 it's difficult. It's, it's, in general, it's humiliating to be an economic immigrant, to be a refugee. There's something about it which is... Uh, it, it's not the same as, as the case of Badri, where he's going to help another country, as you, uh -huh. Jonathan, going, yeah. you know, to, to as in, you know, uh -huh. to an aid, you know, with an aid organization. It must have a good feeling about it, but... Yeah. Well, we can... Uh, well, I want well, to well, actually, <laughs> nice link, because... Okay.